All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation on the new and improved features of the PDW wireless products. We launched this line several years ago. It was Precision Digital's first wireless product line, and we found it really successfully filled its niche in the wireless market. And it was a very popular product for us for a, a non-primary display product line. However, we've made some improvements to it, which make it an even better product. And we're happy to roll that out today, show you all of those changes that we've made. And I think you're gonna be real excited and are gonna be able to really see the niche this fills, which is when you want to replace wires in what would otherwise be a wired system, and you need something simple to spec, simple to set up and easy to sell at a reasonable price. Before we get into that, there's a couple of logistical topics I just like to hit. The most common question I get doing these presentations is about getting the slides or getting a recording of the presentation. And you are gonna get both. Later this week, if I had to guess probably Friday, you're gonna get an email that is going to contain the slides you're gonna see here today, and it's going to have a recording of the presentation. And so if you know anyone who should see this information, but they're not here today, they're gonna to be able to get that information by looking at the slides and the, the video that you're going to get an email on later in the week. Also, you have probably noticed by now that you are in listen only mode. There's simply too many people on the line for me to have everybody's phone lines open. Uh, we hear nothing but kids playing, dogs barking, doors slamming, cars going by, et cetera. Uh, but you can't talk to me. If you want to send a question in, if you'd like to add a comment onto something that I say, please feel free to either send it in via the chat or send it in as a question. And you can do that via your Zoom toolbar. So it should be right there for you to either send in a question or you can, uh, or you can just send in a comment. All right, good. So I had a, a request for closed captioning. So we're gonna go ahead and try to turn that on for you to get things started. All right, well, so we've introduced closed captioning. Uh, you should be able to turn that on and see it for yourselves there. Keep in mind, closed captioning does have a, a struggle with some technical phrases, but it's automatic and it will do its best. The last thing I wanted to address is that at the end of this presentation, you may see a survey. If you see that, I would certainly appreciate you filling that out. It would be a, a favor to me because it helps me produce better content in the future helps us know how we're doing as far as planning the actual topics of the presentations, but also lets me know if the presentation is formatted in a way that people like. So it's no more than a few questions, shouldn't take you any more than a minute. I appreciate the time in advance for you to fill that out. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's talk about what we're here to talk about here today, which is Precision Digital's new wireless systems. I'll start by introducing myself, today's presenter. My name is Joe Ryan. I'm VP of Sales and Marketing at Precision Digital. Uh, I actually started at Precision Digital as a product development engineer. So I have a strong engineering background, but have also been in the process industry for almost 20 years now. And so I've had an opportunity to see these applications up front, get close with them, know what kind of solutions work. And it's one of the things that makes me excited about these wireless products themselves. Today, our agenda is going to be to look at the new features that were designed into the PDW wireless products, then take a deeper dive into the PDW 30 point-to-point -point wireless bridge, and then the PDW 90 point-to-multi-point -multi -point wireless system. Show some examples of what each one of those systems is capable of doing so that you understand when you would use one over the other and, and uh, why you would do that. And then we're also going to look at specific products that you need, specific part numbers, I'll even say, uh, about those systems. So you can see how easy it is to piece together one of these wireless solutions for your applications. And we're gonna do that by giving you literally what you would order to accomplish the application that we looked at. Before we go ahead and get started talking about the PDW30 system though, I do have a poll. And if you could participate in that, it would be great. This is designed to Give me a sense of who you are and what kind of information you might like to see. What kind of role do you have at your company? Are you a distributor, salesperson? Are you a plant science, C-tech, et cetera? Uh, but also to let me know 
what kind of familiarity you have with our previous edition of the wireless products. Uh, how much time should I spend going back and reviewing that? Maybe you're all experts. Maybe none of you have ever heard of it. And so that'll help guide me if you could go ahead and, and contribute to where you're at with that. And we've still got a number of respondents coming in, so I'll give you a few more seconds to finish this. Wait till it starts to level out a bit. And what I'm seeing on my end here, the poll results are that it uh, looks like about half of you are industrial distributor sales folks, and the rest of you are spread out amongst systems designers, engineers, plant INC techs. A few of you even say other, and boy, it'd be great to hear who you are and, and what that other is, either via chat or in the survey at the end, just so I know. And as far as familiarity goes, about 70% of you have a basic understanding of the products. Either you've worked with them in the field and wired them up, or you've looked at the literature, you've done some research, but you haven't really had a chance to deploy one in the field. Only about 5% of you say you are an expert. And so we will spend a little bit of time talking about the basics of what a PDW wireless system is and does, in addition to seeing the just the new features that are present on those. So here, what you see in front of you on this slide is a PDW 30 point to point wireless bridge. And I'm gonna remove my, my video. I'm sorry for doing that. I know you like watching me, but that way it frees me up to write all over this slide. And the PDW 30 is a paired point to point wireless system. So point to point means that you're literally going from one location to one other location. And we call it a wireless bridge because it is designed to replace wires. And to replace a wire, you, you want the same signal you have on a wire on one side to essentially be the same signal you have on the wire on the other side, so that nothing else in this system has to care that you've gone wireless. And so this is a simple example we're showing here on this title slide, but just to, to review it, because it nicely shows what the PDW30 is all about. Here we've got a four to 20 milliamp transmitter, and that transmitter is generating a four to 20 milliamp signal that's gonna go into the PDW30 primary unit. Now that signal is then gonna travel through the magic of wireless, and it's going to come out of the other side of the system, in this case, the PDW30 secondary unit, again, as a four to 20 milliamp signal, which we're gonna then display on, in this case, a panel meter, but it could be your PLC, your chart recorders, go right into your SCADA system. But the, the main message here is that it's coming out of the transmitter as an analog signal, and you're getting it back out of the other side of the wireless system as a, wire, as a wired signal, rather. So I got an analog signal coming in, and I got an analog signal coming out. That's at the core of the PDW system and what it is designed to do. That way you can work with all the instrumentation and the technology you've already got installed in the field and the way you're used to doing it, but you've bridged this four to 20 milliamp signal. You've cut it in those two locations and now that part of it is wireless. Now there's a lot more to it, which we'll see in a minute, but that is the gist of the PDW30 system. A few nice things to note about these wireless systems, I already see some questions coming in about it, is that these are good for one range, I'm sorry, these are good for one mile line of sight outdoors or 500 foot indoor range. We can't do a wireless survey everywhere, though we do have a toolkit we'll look at later for that. And so these are rough ranges that allow us to give you a sense of what should work. And they, these are the ranges we'll stand behind as far as warranty returns and things like that. We are confident in those ranges. Could you get more? Could it be less? Yes, yeah, certainly. But you need a starting point that you can be confident in. And so that's what we spec. The main feature that really makes the PDW30 nice is this virtually plug and play right out of the box element. And what I mean by that is that when you buy a PDW30 pair, you get a pair of units. So your one part number is going to get you both of these sides of the wireless bridge. They come prepared, ready to go out of the box. You give them 24 volts and they operate. You bring a signal into one side and it comes out of the other side and vice versa. You bring a signal into that side, it'll come out of the other side. And so it's going to bridge your wires for you. It is the easiest wireless system you're going to find to set up if all you want to do is bridge your, wireless, uh, bridge your wired signals. What kind of signals can you bridge? Well, 
you can do four to 20 million signals. And that goes both directions. So I can bring a signal in here, get it out over here. And then I can take an entirely different four to 20 million signal, bring it in over here and get it out over there. You can get the screen up to four digital IO. Again, going both ways. I could have one coming in over here and coming out over there. And I could have three more digital IO go in the other direction. You can also do RS-485 Modbus. Have one side connected up the three-wire Modbus, and it bridges that signal to the other side's three-wire Modbus. And the only thing that you need to worry about as far as well, what's a primary versus what's a secondary, what's the difference in those two, is that the primary needs to be on the Modbus master side if you're using RS-485 Modbus. For every other feature, the 4 to 20, the discrete, doesn't even matter. You, you, you actually program anything you need to program into the primary side, but there's so little you need to program on these that that's pretty much irrelevant. They work out of the box. At most, you may need to change a, a network ID if you have multiples of these systems installed. So essentially, you get two near identical pairs ready to be deployed in the field. We do have a PDA 10 signal strength survey tool which will let you know if this is going to work before you buy it. I mentioned about half of you are our distribution resale channel. And so that's a particular interest to you because you can go around with a survey kit. And when you're talking about applications and you want to run a wire without having to run a wire, you can pop out your survey kit and see if you could just plop one of these PDW30s there and bring that new signal back to the control room. And we have free PDW Manager software to program these, which is real easy to connect up via a USB port on the device. But you probably don't need it. On the PDW30, it's just so simple. I don't even bother with the software. As I said, if you change anything, it's probably going to be either configuring the digital I.O. to be various input or output states or setting a new network ID. And those two things are so easy to do through the front, you don't even really need to bother with the software. It is a backlit LCD, so you can see it in any environment. And of course, there is the question of power. These are 9 to 30 VDC powered. So they're not battery powered. They don't come with a solar system. You, you could spec a solar system out for them, but it doesn't come standard. Uh, but they are not battery powered devices. You need to have some kind of field power to operate these. And that is because as wire replacement devices, we want them to communicate as quickly as possible, as often as possible, uh, we don't want this to be something where you're you're only updating at a certain low update rate to save battery power or anything like that. Uh, we want it to be very fast, and fast requires power. So they are a line-powered device. So there's your real brief overview on what the PDW30s are. As far as new features go that we just started to launch, well, before I even look at any of these bullet points, you're going to see one right off the bat. They are now available in stainless steel enclosures. So if you are in a real harsh chemical environment or you're somewhere where you expect these to get salt on them or salt water or salt mists, then we offer the stainless steel option, which is great for those environments. As far as the, the bullet points go, uh, we've got a loss of signal digital output now. So if this link gets broken somehow, you can have a digital output coming out of either side of the device that will tell you that you've got that loss of signal so that you can send it back to a PLC, a control room, heck, a light if you want to, mounted on top somewhere, uh, to alert people to the fact that, okay, this connection has been dropped and someone should investigate. Because either someone has parked a truck somewhere they shouldn't, or they have lost power in the field. Uh, either way, it's probably not bad. good. You want to know what's going on, and you want to have some kind of a signal to tell you that you need to investigate that connection, and that is now available. We also have a field installable relay module. It's an accessory that goes inside the enclosure that will allow you to turn those digital outputs into five amp relay outputs. And so if you want to drive something more powerful than just say a light or a horn, you can do that now with the mechanical relay option that can install as a module in the base of the enclosure. And we'll see that in a bit, in a minute. We've added cap touch through glass buttons. So if you need to do any setup, uh, you could remove the cover. These are only a safe area device. But if you don't want to, you can just touch the buttons just like you would on your cell phone. The enclosure itself is larger. These are now, for those of you familiar with Precision Digital's other products, these are now the same size as our PD6800 or 6820 
explosion proof products. <coughs> Excuse me. They no longer are the size of our PD663 products. And that means you've got a lot more room to work with inside of there. And the operating temperature has been expanded. We get now go down to minus 55. I do see some of you are from cold weather environments, especially up north in Canada. Uh, well, these will now, the wireless portion of this will now operate down to minus 55. The display may fail at minus 40, but it will recover, be in good shape, and keep on working all the way down to minus 55 and back. And your display will recover as well, by the way. It's worthwhile taking a look at these new enclosures just to see a few additional features on them. So we've got tag, tag loops, so you can put a stainless steel tag dangling off of this. And so we've got a nice little loop up on top for you to connect to. We've got tamper-proof seal holes and set screws to let you lock that cover down. The 32 character dual line alphanumeric dot matrix LCD with backlight is bigger than on the previous version. So that's helpful for people like myself who could use a level larger digits. We talked about the through glass buttons. Uh, the antenna itself is now a three quarter inch NPT conduit antenna. And it is more ruggedized and harder to break than our earlier versions. We've enlarged the flanges over previous versions. So now you can fit a wider range of pipe mount U-bolts in there. We've got that NEMA 4X IP68 stainless steel enclosure available. And we more clearly mark the primary versus the secondary in case that does come up. Lastly, the conduit entries on the sides of these are also three quarter inch NPT. So you can fill a larger, more standard size pipe in there to either just run the con or run your wires through, or if you want to support the whole unit. And this side by side will give you a good sense of those changes. As you can see, it's just a much larger enclosure, which is great because it lets us give you a lot more room for wiring and connectors. You can see on the older board how the connectors were all kind of crammed on there. They barely fit. And that meant the wires were tough to connect up as well. And it turns out folks do use this for more than just one signal. Our original thinking was that they'll probably pass one signal through here, you know, one four to 20 or maybe a couple discrete. And it turns out people do have inputs and outputs and discrete signals coming through this thing. Uh, and so they need that extra wiring room. And so now you've got the same size connectors, but you can see how much more space there is there to work with. We've also made it much more rugged. Everything sealed inside of a plastic electronics module and the antenna itself, rather than just being mounted on an exposed board, is now securely mounted through that electronics module. So in general, from the size of the antenna to the way the electronics mount, it's just a more rugged product. Now here you'll see how the new module install. You literally just push it down to insert it and pull it out to snap it out. There's no, there's no tools or screws. You know, you don't see any screws there. You just literally push the module down, it snaps in place, you pull it out when you want to pull it out. And in the base of that enclosure, you may, may, may be able to make out the relay option module. On the relay option module, all you do is connect up your digital outputs from your wireless electronics module, and it turns those digital IO into two five amp relays. They now, both are available in aluminum or stainless steel, but it's worth noting that when you buy a PDW30 pair, you get the pair in aluminum or stainless steel. So you're going to get either two aluminum or two stainless steel. Now, if that's not gonna work for you, you know, we can talk to you and there's other ways to order it, but generally you're getting the pair in the same material. And we've got the cap touch through glass buttons, which will now work under any lighting condition because they're capacitive touch versus some of our products in the past that use IR buttons, which might sometimes need some adjustment time if they were aiming right at the sun and you step in front of it to work with it. So now that has been eliminated and you've got cap touch buttons that work all the time, glass on or glass off. I have a couple of applications here, but I did have one question I wanted to address. Uh, Matthew had asked about the antenna connection, and this is a stainless steel antenna connection. So uh, that actually extends up into the antenna body a bit, and then the antenna extends off of that, and then we backfill that with epoxy. So this is an incredibly rugged uh, antenna mount method 
and it's going to hold up in any kind of environment you may have. So let's look at a couple of application examples where you might use the PDW30. And these are designed to show you how you might use it as an application example, but also to show you really what you can do with these. And so in this case, we've got a 4 to 20 milliamp level transmitter, and that's mounted on some kind of tank. Let's just say, for simplicity's sake, we have a water tank, and we have a 4 to 20 level transmitter on it. So we're bringing that 4 to 20 milliamps into our, in this case, our secondary unit. But that's not really relevant for this. It could be either way. That 4 to 20 milliamp enters into that secondary side, that field mount side, we'll call it. It's out here is in the field. And I know you're all rushing to your keyboards to tell me how excellent my drawing is, and I appreciate that. And over here, we're going to call it the control room. In other words, it's a remote location where we've got our PLC, but we still want to be able to have good visibility on what's going on. So we bring it into the secondary unit, and then that 4 to 20 milliamp signal is going to travel through the magic of wireless over to the other unit in the PDW30 pair, where it's going to come out as a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And in this case, we're choosing to display that on a 6602 loop power display. Now the person in the control location has visibility on what's going on in that tank. This display is also set up to offer high and low level alarms on that tank. So even though it's a loop powered meter, our loop powered meters do have relays on them. And so those relays are going to come out of that loop powered meter and pass into the digital inputs on that control room side wireless pair. Again, travel through the magic of wireless to the other side, where now out at the tank, those digital outputs can go to our relay module and those relays can turn on as needed, which are going to trigger the higher low alarms, or trigger those the high and low lights and horns, rather. So now I've essentially got my tanks in one location, my operator is designed to be standing somewhere else, and I'm bridging what would have to otherwise be a 4 to 20 milliamp signal and some relay lines, and I'm doing it all wirelessly with up to a mile distance if it's out there a line of sight or 500 feet indoors. Lastly, using our new feature, we've got a loss of signal digital output, which is going to go back to a PLC so that the system will know, in case I want to show it on big control room TVs or send the, send the information out to somewhere else. Maybe I want to send it to a, a telemetry unit and send a text message or something. Uh, but that loss of signal contact will go out so that they know if this breaks somehow and all these signals can no longer be updated, uh, I'll have that loss of signal triggered somewhere and, and an operator can be made aware. So that's a nice basic example of what you can do with a PDW30. Now let's talk about what you need to actually build that system. I talked about the fact that these need to be easy to order. Well, we start by ordering a pair of PDW30s for general purpose area and aluminum. And we get one of those, which comes with both the primary and secondary units. That's a key concept with the PDW30s. You get both units of the pair when you buy one. And then I want to use relays to run my lights and horns. I, I may be able to do it with the digital I.O., but I just feel better with a mechanical relay. And so I got two PDWM2 relay, or one, sorry, one PDWM2 relay module. So one of those just for the field mount side by the tank. And then I got the two lights and horns and that loop powered meter to display the information for the operator. So in total, I got five items that I ordered and I've now got a complete wireless system to connect up to my transmitter. Then we've got this example, which shows you sending four to 20 milliamp signals in both directions. So again, I've got my level transmitter. My four to 20 milliamp is going into my, in this case, my primary. It's then traveling wirelessly and being reconstituted back into a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, which goes to another loop power display. But in this case, I want the operator at the remote location to be able to change the position of a valve feeding the tank. So we've got our PD460 valve positioner, which outputs a 4 to 20 milliamp, and they adjust that just by changing the position of this dial. And that 4 to 20 output will then come into the secondary unit travel wirelessly back out to the field, 
where it's put back into a four to 20 milliamp signal and it goes to a digital valve position. So in this case, I've got two four to 20 milliamps involved. I've got one going in each direction through the wireless bridge. And I have an interesting question that's come in from an end. They ask, hey, Joe, can we connect three wire for 20 milliamp sensors or is it only loop powered or only loop powered instruments? So the PDW30 has to be 24 volt power. So just to be clear, we're not showing it in these pictures because it'd be a little complicated, but each one of these units has to have 24 volts powering. them. Well, well technically it's nine to 30, but in most of applications, it's going to be 24 volts. Now, if this level transmitter is also powered off of that 24 volt line, and I've got a four wire level transmitter here, that's perfectly fine. And on the other side, though we're using a loop power display here, that's just for simplicity's sake. If I wanted to replace this with, let's say, a, a ProView line powered panel meter, well, I could be powering that panel meter off of 120 volts or 24 volts or whatever is really appropriate for that display. Uh, how I power this unit doesn't really matter, uh, but we can use loop powered if we want to because this is a powered 4 to 20 milliamp output coming out of the PDW30. So I hope that fully answered that question as far as what could be two wire, what could be four wire. And here we have a system showing you a repeater, another option available for these systems. You can see the repeater looks very much like the primary and secondary units, and that's because it is. It doesn't have any I.O., so all it's, all it's got to be wired to is just 24 volts to turn it on. But that will get you another hop in distance. So I've got to be within a mile of the line of sight to my repeater on both sides of the wireless system. But now I could, in theory, get myself in total two-mile distance between the two sides of this pair. Otherwise, this is exactly the same as the earlier application we saw. 4 to 20 milliamp coming in. It goes wirelessly to the repeater, which repeats that signal out to the other side, where it comes down to our display. And then that display is programmed for the high and low alarms. So those relays come out, go to our digital inputs, bounce through the repeater, and then output to our relay board, which gives me closed contact relays to turn on my high and low alarms as needed. To set up that system, I need all the same parts I needed before, my one pair, and then my repeater and my relay module. So I just add one repeater and otherwise everything in that system is identical. The two light and horns and the loop powered meter for display and control. And that's your PDW30. Talking about the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I do have one other question here. It looks like about the PDW30 before we move on. Uh, does the PDW30 have internal memory in case of signal loss? Would it retain the readings? So in the case of signal loss, you can program it, what you'd like it to do. Uh, it could hold the existing signal. It could go high, it could go low. Um, that, it depends on how you have it programmed, what it will do in that case. Now let's talk about your PDW90 point to multipoint system. And that's a little different than your PDW30s. It's essentially expanding on that system. And so what a PDW90 does, and I'm going to show this, I'm going to stay on the slide for a minute to kind of explain that, is the PDW90 is designed to be a single point, which is this plastic NEMA 4X box here we call a base station, and to connect up wirelessly to multiple remote locations. So everything goes from its remote location back to the base station. It's not a, it's not a uh, mesh network topology. Everything connects directly back to the base station. So all of your all of your ranges are between the base station and what we now call the field units, which replace the the pair of the PDW30. Each field unit is essentially one side of that PDW30 system, but now instead of connecting just to each other they are connecting back to the base. And then at the base station, I can have all sorts of IO to send signals back out, send signals in to deploy to the field, to the field, et cetera. By the way, I'm gonna mention this one just because it's a great question. Sorry to interrupt my talk about what the PDW90 is. 
But Patrick asked what the availability is of these devices. And, and I'm happy to say the availability is great. We've got the parts in-house to build these. You're looking at six days or less if you were to order a system today. So the PDW-90 system contains a base station and some number of field units. And you can see the base station options are over here on the left. We've got a version of it that can hold 16 IO cards, a version of it that can hold eight IO cards, and a version of it that just holds two IO cards. And then some number of field units, which are those units that look just like our PDW-30 pair. Those are designed to mount in the field, on the tanks, at the transmitter locations. The range is the same, one door, one mile outdoor line of sight between the base station and any given field unit, or 500 feet indoors between the base station and any single field unit. The field unit has all the same hardware on it. So you've got your four to 20 milliamp in and out, four discrete digital IO, and RS-485 with Modbus. So I can go from the base station to the field unit or field unit to the base station in however many of those I want, as long as it's one analog in, one analog out, four discrete IO, and RS-485. Now, the way the base station works is I'm going to install a number of cards into this, or modules, I should say, that give me IO for the base station. So let's say I wanted to have just two discrete inputs coming in from the field, and I wanted to send those wirelessly to my base station. I wanted to get them out as relays. Well, I would get a dual analog out. I'm sorry, I would get a dual relay output module. So two relays and a module for each one of those field units that I wanted to bring two discrete IO into so I could get relays out of my base station. And we'll see that more later, but that's, that's the gist of it. Uh, this you do have to set up with your PDW manager software. So it's a good thing there's free software available. You have to use that to map your IO and to connect up all the, the field units in the system to the base station. And it's worth noting that all these PCBs are conformally coded for dust and humidity protection. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it's a nice little feature that we added to this just to make it a little bit more hardened for the kinds of environments they go into. And like the field units, uh, the PDW-90 base stations are all 9 to 30 volt DC powered. So everything you see here it's going to have its own 24 volt power supply need. So what's new on this from our old PDW-90 systems? Well, now we can do up to 32 4 to 20 million signals because we can connect up to 32 individual field units. So if each one of those has one 4 to 20 million signal coming into it, well, you can get 32 4 to 20 milliamps out of your base station. We also resized the base station. We used to only have the 16 uh, unit, the 16 module version. And now we have the eight module version and the two module version. I'm sorry, I keep saying eight. The six module version or the two module version as well. So you can right size your base station for your application. We've got that loss of signal digital output that's available for both the field units and the base station the stainless steel options for the field units, much like with the PDW-30s, as well as that extended temperature range. And here's a good look at the base station to really show you what's going on there. So you've got your RS-485 connection. That comes standard. You've got your display module and your USB for connecting up. You'll note the antenna now is a smaller, uh, still Neva 4X connection, uh, but a smaller antenna. And that's really handy because oftentimes people will remote mount this where they'll put the base station inside the building and they just want to run a small antenna to the outside of the building and mount it so they can still keep their outdoor line of sight connection. And that's easy to do here because the antenna is easy to mount just about anywhere. And your power connection, of course. And this is all mounted inside of a rugged plastic NEMA 4X field enclosure. And it all comes with hinge doors with clasps to shut it. So you don't need tools to open this. You're not going to drop the cover. You're not going to lose screws. And all that hardware is stainless steel on there. And on the inside, you've got various module slots, which you can fill with various modules. And those modules could be dual analog inputs, dual analog outputs, 
for digital I.O. or dual relay outputs. So there's 16 modules with roughly two I.O. per module. You can get up to 32 4 to 20 milliamps out or 32 relays out or some combination thereof. And with that module comes the depluggable connector that's appropriate for that type of I.O. So everything's easily labeled and connected up. Your field unit looks at X just like your PDW30 uh, pairs did. So all the same enclosure features of that. We've got the three different sizes for the 16, the six and the two. We talked about the new stainless steel enclosures. And this shows you how you connect up to the software. There's a USB port on the inside of that PDW90 box. And you just connect that up via USB to whatever computer you're going to use and operate our free PDW manager software to map out all those IO and connect it up. You'd think it would be complicated, but it's actually fairly easy to do. Um, we've done a surprisingly light amount of tech support on all these applications we've installed because people seem to understand the software and how to get it running, which is great. All you have to do to install those modules is snap it in. You see the module is fully sealed inside of its own plastic enclosure. So you get the kind of module you want, you snap it down onto the, the expansion board that's on the PW90's internals, and then you wire up and plug in your depluggable connector. And here's how those applications might change a little bit that we saw earlier if we were using a PDW90 system. Here we've got a similar application where we've got our high and low alarm strobes. We've got our uh, field unit now instead of a PDW30 pair, taking a 4 to 20 milliamp from our level transmitter in the field. And that works the same. I, I take my 4 to 20 in, it transmits wirelessly to my base station where I get a 4 to 20 out, and then I bring my relays back in which are what's driving my Clayton horn. However, because we're now dealing with a PDW90 point to multipoint system, I can add, in this case, an extra set. So I've got my transmitter coming into my, my field unit, travels wirelessly to the module, or to, I'm sorry, to the PDW90 base station, gets a 4 to 20 out from the analog output module, and then we bring the relays into the digital input module, which then transmit back to the field to run my light and horn. So essentially, I can get the exact same thing I had earlier, but I'm duplicating the whole system and I'm only going through one product to do it. Now, to build that kind of a system, what do I need? Well, I need a base station. In this case, I'm getting the two IO slot version, two module version, and I'm getting two modules for it my dual analog output and my four digital inputs. For the field side of things, I'm going to need two field units, one for each one of the transmitters and tanks, and then I'm going to need uh, two relay modules to run my lights and horns. Then I get the four light and horn modules, and I get the two loop power meters I was using, one for each one of those 4 to 20 milliamp signals. And that's it. We're, we're done. Now we've got a system that's running two remote tanks, alarming them from the site where I've got the base station and the panel meters and sending those signals and when they're in alarm state out to the field to run the lane horns. If you expand that out, well, what is possible here? Well, at a maximum, I'm going to be able to do 32 4 to 20 million level transmitters. So here you've got 32 pairs of a, a level transmitter combined with a field unit. The 4 to 20 coming out of the transmitter into the field unit. And then back at the base station, if you populate the inside of here with 16 times two dual analog output modules, well, that's how I'm going to get my 32 outputs. And I could take those 32 4 to 20 million outputs, and most likely in that case, I'm running them into my PLC. But so long as I'm within that one mile outdoor, if I just put indoor range from all of these locations, I've now not had to run 32 tanks worth of wires to get it back to the base station. And that system would consist of your 16 module base station with 16 dual analog output cards, and then 32 field units, one for each top of those tanks. Pause for a couple of questions here. Um, 
Max has asked if the PW90 has explosion proof certs. And I'm afraid it does not. Uh, I know that the enclosures look like they might. And certainly there may come a time in the near future where they do. <laughs> but for now, we all know how agencies work. Uh, for now, they are just for safe area applications. And Yosef has asked a question, is there Ethernet connectivity available? Uh, and we do not have Ethernet connectivity. We do have RS-485, and they handle Modbus RTU. So if you had an Ethernet to Modbus device or gateway like that, you could certainly get it on the Ethernet like that. Uh, but we don't have a, a web server or any kind of Ethernet connectivity standard in the base stations or the field units. So let's look at a couple of Modbus applications. These are always interesting. I've worked on several of these with folks. Uh, and it, it is a more complex way to do it because Modbus always is, but a great and easy way to do it from the perspective of running all your wires and setting up all your devices if you're gonna be doing a lot of IO. And so to show you what that might look like, here's a good Modbus application. Once again, just to keep the example simple, we've got our Modbus server level transmitter here. And server is just another word for slave. The new Modbus terminology is that servers are slaves and clients are masters. But if you're familiar with master-slave terminology, this would be the slave. And so we've got our Modbus level transmitter. And this may have several pieces of information inside of it, right? This probe could be telling me top level, interface level, and average temperature. And so that's a lot of information. I don't want to pull that all out via 485. So I'm going to do it via Modbus. And so I connect up my 485 three-wire bus between the field unit and the level transmitter. To get a local display next to the tank, we've also chosen to add into that same bus one of our PD6730X tank site indicators. And that's going to be set up as a packet sniffer so that any time this level transmitter sends information out that's relevant to it, that display is going to see that information and display it. And it's going to do it so that nothing else even needs to know it's there. As far as anything else in this system is aware, that thing doesn't exist. It's just a packet sniffer displaying the information from this transmitter one when it is responding to a request. So here is my three-wire RS-485 bus on that particular tank. And then I've duplicated that three times. So I've got three RS-485 networks there. Now, back on the master side of things, or the client side of things, I've got a consolidator plus. This is probably sitting at the control station, the bus stop inside the control room or a shelter, or maybe even in the control room itself in the plant. And it's going to be the Modbus master that pulls out for that information from each tank. So it's got its own RS-485 three-wire connection running between it and the base station. And I don't need any modules for this because I'm just using the onboard RS-485. So when the consolidator sends out something on its Modbus channel, on its Modbus bus, its RS-485 bus, uh, it's going to say, okay, great. Tank one, give me your top level. And it's going to send that command out, which is going to get transmitted wirelessly to all three of these field units. And that signal is going to then go back to wired 485 to get to all of these field units. Now it's going to be asking for tank one's information. So it's going to be asking that of the transmitter that's on tank one. So only tank one is going to respond back. And so it's going to reply with, okay, here's my top level information. This is going to go back wirelessly and return back to the consolidator plus for display and control reasons. And of course, the tank site indicator is going to see that response, and it's going to display that information on it. Once again, the, the key thing here as far as setting up Modbus systems is that much like with the PDW-30, how the master needs to be on the primary side, with the PDW-90, my master needs to be on the base station side. So as long as my master for the network is on the base station side, which it obviously is here, then we're good. So now I'm getting multiple pieces of information potentially out of these transmitters. I'm getting a tank side indicator. I'm getting it all wirelessly transmitted back to my control room. And all I have to do to wire all this up is just run three wire bus, run a three wire bus between these devices. So no four to twenties. I don't have to run 
if I'm getting three pieces of information out of each of these, I'd have to run nine four to twenties from my base station to my consolidator. None of that is going on. It's just all being done via serial communication. And so to build out that system is very simple because I have no IO modules. I get the smallest base station I can. I get three field units, one for each the top of each tank. I get one consolidator with no IO card, no four to twenties are coming in, no pulse inputs, no relays are going out, no analog signals are going out. I just get my one basic consolidator plus. I buy the Modbus feature package for it that allows it to be a Modbus master or client as well as a snooper or even simulate Modbus devices. And I actually want to get three of those tank side indicators, those snooping or packet sniffing Modbus displays are PD6730Xs, one for each one of those tanks as well. And that's it. And now I've just built out that entire system. You take that to its logical conclusion, like we did with 4 to 20 milliamps. Well, I can have 32 of these transmitter field unit pairs, where all I have connecting them is my RS-485 bus. And then I, again, just have my basic three wires connecting my consolidator and my field unit. And now it can pull out up to 33 transmitters off of 30, I'm sorry, 32 transmitters off of 32 field units. And none of this is passing into the world of 4 to 20 million. It's all pulling direct digital data out of the transmitters. What's even more interesting about that is, in theory, you'd be pulling additional information out of these transmitters. It's, it's connecting up to 32 field units. With a consolidator plus, you could actually choose to put, you know, say two transmitters on each of those or pull out two or three pieces of information from some of these transmitters. But for sake of simplicity, I'm going to say 32. And to build that one, again, I just need my basic base station, my basic consolidator with its Modbus enhanced feature suite. And then I need 32 field units to put one of these on the top of each of those tanks with each of those transmitters. So here's an example just to show you physically an application that we worked on and why sometimes that can be, it can be helpful to use wireless. This was a municipal wastewater plant in New York where we used a PDW-90 system. And I like this example because they were trying to connect up to two different locations. They wanted to see the data and work with it in this central control building. However, the information that they wanted was either up here in these chemical storage sheds or near there, uh, or it was down here by these sedimentation tanks and our sedimentation pools. Uh, and eventually they may have even wanted to expand it to the digesters, which are next to, but technically their own location. And so running all these wires to get all these signals back to the controller would have meant literally running the whole length of their plant. And that just wasn't going to happen. And so a wireless solution really was ideal for them. They needed four, four to 20 milliamp signals brought back to the central building. They had to go in two different directions to get to those locations. They may have wanted future expansion. And so their conclusion was to go with a PDW-90. And the field units themselves were easy to mount. You can see they put them outdoors up high where they could get direct line of sight from their antennas. The design of the field unit made it very easy to just screw it onto plates or mounting rails really any kind of uh, attachable construction that they had out there they could use. And because they're powered by 24 volts, it was easy to get a hold of that because they already had that running everywhere in order to power transmitters, lights, horns, you name it. Uh, 24 volts was a plentiful thing for them. And so not needing a power supply to step 120 down to 24 was super helpful. In reality, they, they probably could have used our stainless steel enclosures, at least for some of these, but that didn't exist at the time, so we stuck it out with aluminum. And they just used the field units directly as they came out of the box. Uh, they used our supplied antennas that were already threaded into the conduit and ready to go. They mounted their base station indoors, and then they ran a conduit up so that they could run the, the antenna to a remote location. Um, in reality, what they ended up doing was they didn't even bother with that. They just stuck the antenna out the side, looking out a window, 
which gave them enough line of sight to reach the locations they needed to on that side of the building. Uh, and it was still able to connect to the sedimentation tanks. I think that was decided. Uh, and they ended up using the conduit that they ran for the antenna to bring in the 24 volts. So they put that the conduit in. I've seen that done a lot to run the antenna remotely, but in the end, they didn't even do that. They just stuck the antenna sticking out the side. Then they were able to take their eight four to 20 milliamp inputs and their eight uh, analog outputs just ran right into their SCADA system. And up came all the information that they wanted from the plant. So it was a really simple install for them for it otherwise would have cost a small fortune in installation costs. Instead, they got away with it for roughly $1,000 per point. Much cheaper alternative for them. Before we start wrapping up, it's worth looking at a few accessories. So we have the signal repeater. We saw that in one of the examples. As you can see, it looks just like a field unit or a pair of the PDW30s. Uh, however, it is coded up as a repeater. And that gives you essentially one additional hop of one mile outdoor line of sight or 500 foot indoor range. One question I'm sure is being asked and probably typed right now by someone is how many repeaters can I use? And I would generally recommend no more than four. Uh, every repeater does add latency in the system. And I found once you start going over four, it gets a little tricky sometimes. So, so I suggest you try to limit it to four if you can. Ideally, you live, you'd use none, but sometimes that's just not possible. And so they're there as an alternative if you need to use them. You can imagine in many cases you want to mount these on a pipe, but it's not a great idea to have your antenna mounted right uh, adjacent to possibly touching a, a metal pipe. And so rather than mounting it right in line with a metal pipe, we offer a pipe mount kit that offsets the meter by a bit. So you can get some distance in between your antenna and your grounded metal pole. That relay option module is new, but I think a great accessory because it lets you bring in your digital outputs and turn them into relay outputs. And because it's taking its signal from the digital outputs, there's no programming here. There's no software to set this up. It's just a a hardware element. You bring in your outputs, and when those outputs turn on, your relays turn on. So very simple to install, very simple to use. And sure enough, by the way, thank you, Paul. There's the question about uh, how many repeaters we can use. So just repeat, you know, I, I generally recommend you could use up to four repeaters. And this is the survey kit that I was speaking about earlier. With the survey kit, you get the same electronics and antenna that we use on the PEW series, but in a much smaller handheld package. And the idea here is that you have a, a red target unit. So you put this down somewhere where you want the wireless system to connect from. And then you walk around with the handheld side of it and you see where your connectivity is high enough to use. You check where you want it. You can move it around. You check different parts of a wall or around the side of a tank or uh, Go on the roof, you know, anywhere you want to go to see how your, your connectivity is going to work back to the target station. And we designed the system so it can be done by one person, which is why we've got a target you leave behind and a handheld that you wander around with. And all you need to see what's going on is this handheld unit. It gives you all the signal strength and uh, information on whether or not you're good to go. It also does have some troubleshooting capability if you wanted to troubleshoot your system. But I'll tell you 99% of the time, someone is just using this to confirm that their installation is going to work before they buy the unit. If you have very directional antenna needs, you know, if you're not, if you're not going like we were in that wastewater application example from one point in two different directions, if you're able to use Yagi antennas, which have a very narrow band of signal strength, uh, we do have 60V and 90V wireless Yagi antennas available. And if you're going to use Yagi antennas, you're going to need extension cables. You may need them anyway. And so we've got 20 foot or 40 foot extension cables available for either N type connections or RPSMA connections, depending on what type of antenna you want to use at the end of that. And this is what your PDW90 modules look like. So that'd be good just to take a quick look at that. These are the screw holes that you can use to mount it onto the 
uh, actually, I take that back. I think, uh, yeah, those are alignment holes that are used to mount it onto the base station. Uh, though they do just snap in. Uh, and then you've got here a two relay module, a two analog output module, a four digital I.O. module. I think I.O. because it, it, it's four DI, but those can be programmed to be inputs or outputs. And your two analog input module. And those just snap inside your base station. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of what the new features are and the general purpose is of our PDW-30 and PDW-90 systems. I think we've answered the majority of the questions along the way. There are a few in here that are a little more complicated. So if you've got questions that I didn't get to yet, that's because I will have to do some follow-up after the presentation to talk to you at length about them. Uh, I'll remind you that you may see a survey when we close out. It would be great for you to fill that out. I really appreciate those people who can spend a few time, a few minutes to give us that feedback. It really is a big help in planning future presentations. So uh, please do fill that out if you see it. I thank everyone. You've given me almost an hour. I hope it has been well worth your time. And if you see any needs for wireless systems around the plants you're in, don't be afraid to reach out. We'll help you get one set up, and I think you'll be happy with them. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your Wednesday and rest of your week. Bye.